Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and I want to thank you for joining me again on the broadcast here at WJMM 99.1 FM. Um, or you may be listening on the podcast, but either way, WJMM is Central Kentucky Christians Radio. It's 99.1 on the FM dial, and we thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about podcasts and how you can get those in just a moment, but I hope you were challenged and or encouraged by yesterday's message in either way challenged or encouraged, I pray you're blessed. Also, if if not, then maybe you at least got a good laugh, maybe even a really good laugh at my expense with my story of personal humiliation my senior year in high school. <laughs> even more than that, I hope you got a biblical picture of what humility is and are encouraged to put it on, to literally clothe yourself in it and practice it towards others every day. Now, I mentioned earlier, if you missed it, you can check out the podcast at, at uh, wjmm.com, wjmm.com. Click on the podcast tab over on the right, and then the Love and Lordship links will get you today and the previous two days. If you want more than that, you can find all of these and many other articles and videos and podcasts at loveandlordship.com, loveandlordship.com. That's our ministry website that is the ministry for um the authority of love, that where the book comes from and where this radio program comes from. So uh, thank you for checking that out. Let me know what you think. If you got questions, if you agree and want to encourage me, thank you. If you disagree and want to discuss it, I'd love to do that and engage with you. You can do that at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Loveandlordship at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. Now, Peter continues wrapping up this first letter to the churches, we discussed yesterday's message and how the Holy Spirit seemingly gives us a natural spiritual progression from hospitality to humility. And then on to today's one another that we may find once again seems, wow, that's really nice and wonderful. And at the same time, it's a bit discomforting. So let's take a look at today's scripture text and find out what all it entails, what it's calling us to, and how we can choose to lovingly and faithfully find ways to obediently carry it out. Remember, the purpose of all these commands, these one another commands, is to help us fulfill the second greatest command to love our neighbors, all others, as we love ourselves, and in so doing become more like Christ and His love for us. Before we jump into today's text and message, let me set the table with some scenarios and questions that may help us grasp what this command is actually calling us to. The first one is this. When you were a young child, what did you think about when it came to kissing anyone except your mom and maybe your dad? Okay. Number two, what did you think about, say, in elementary school when others talked about kissing, especially someone of the opposite sex? Can anyone say cooties? Ah. Number three, how did this change as you went into middle school and then on into high school, into puberty and adolescence and growing into a young adult? What did kissing mean then, huh? Number four, even as adults, where do our minds go when we see or hear talk of kissing others, especially if we see this being done to someone other than a spouse, a child, or family member? Stick with me here, as I think you'll see the purpose of these questions as we get into today's one another. Remember, the goal and desire of all these commands is to help us love others as we learn to do so from Christ and according to His Word. Why did He give us these commands if they weren't necessary? One final question in leading up to today's command and Scripture text. If you haven't figured out what it is already, why do you think we tend to be so averse to the whole concept of an innocent kiss to someone we are supposed to love and care about? Could it be that we have become so pornified? Yeah, I said it, pornified, and or guided only by our emotions that we fail to see what this kind of loving action and response is meant to do for us as believers and as Christ's church? <laughs> now, if you're still listening, and I hope you are, let's find out more about what it means when we are told to greet one another with a kiss of love. 1 Peter 5.14 literally says that. Greet one another with a kiss of love. What does it mean to greet one another and do it with a kiss of love? In other texts, it's referred to as a holy kiss. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Why is this seemingly 
totally awkward command given to us as Christians in order to show our love to one another. Ugh, why do we got to do that? We're looked at as weird or odd. Well, let's first take a look at and recognize the cultural issues that were much different then than they are today. We also must not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Let's dig a little deeper to find out what the Holy Spirit wanted us to learn in this command and several other times that it's given in Scripture, as I alluded to, the Holy Kiss, when it comes to how we are to love each other in Christ and in His church. Peter closes out his first letter to believers. It's, the, I think, maybe actually the last verse there in 1 Peter 5, with the same command that Paul shared with the Roman believers, greet one another with a kiss of love. Now, if you're thinking as a young boy or girl, especially a young boy probably, you're probably thinking, ew. If you're thinking as a young adolescent, you may be moving from ooh to hmm. I know several that I'd like to give a holy kiss to, right? If you're thinking as someone who's allowed the culture and porn to infiltrate and rewire your brain, and it's happened overwhelmingly in the majority today, you're missing the point completely. How can we think in terms of what God is wanting us to learn in this command? Why did he give it to us? He doesn't waste any words or commands. Again, there's great value in understanding this act of love from a body of Christ perspective as we encourage and build one another up. Huh? There's a couple of other one another's right there, right, that we've talked about. That we build a spiritual and relational intimacy that is imperative in showing each other and the world what God's love looks like. This is not the kiss of marital or sexual love. And I put those together because that's where they belong. This is an act of honoring and preferring others above self. There it is. That's where it starts. That we honor someone else. That we do it in holiness. This act of love, much like today's kiss on the cheek, handshake, or hug, is to declare that we care for and belong to one another in Christ. Let me say that again. This act of love in this command, give, kiss, give one another a kiss of love or a holy kiss, much like the peck on the cheek or a handshake or a hug, is to declare that we truly care for and belong to one another in Christ. Are you apprehensive about sharing a heartfelt embrace for a brother or sister in Christ? Or is the way of our culture cause you to be insecure in expressing a godly and a brotherly, sisterly love for our fellow disciples in Christ? The holy kiss, holy embrace, etc., are signs of peace and loving acceptance and honor among those who believe. That's what Paul was getting at. That's what Peter is saying in this command. I pray that we all can learn to love one another and express it in line with God's word and design of pure love so the world will know and begin to clamor for him and his love. I can tell you that for the longest time in my life, and I, I know for many others, a handshake was all we could muster. The pornified culture and other things that distorted it that we live in has not only drawn us to an impure love, but has pulled us away from being able to share God's pure kind of love in Christ that is gracious and respectful with and to one another. I pray that we can humble ourselves yesterday's command, right? As we talked about it in the episode yesterday. And be careful and bold as we greet one another with a proper and pure love. Maybe it is a peck on the cheek. Maybe on the forehead. Maybe it is a hug. But make sure it's done in purity and in God's kind of love. And be drawn so that we are not only drawn, but others who know us are drawn to know Christ as Savior and Lord. Here's some food for thought. As we wrap up this awkward thought, right, command. Over the last three days of these one another commands and messages, I find it interesting how the Holy Spirit moved Peter to go from hospitality to humility to intimate and pure expressions of love toward each other as believers. I'm so glad we've been able to recapture some of this and truly believe that if we'll continue to move in this direction and away from the pornified, creepy ideas of culture and even of manhood, allowing us to properly express this kind of godly and, as I said earlier, brotherly, sisterly love in Christ as his disciples and as his church. 
and it will have a much greater impact in showing this depraved and perverted world what real love is, his real love. Here's our action items to help us with that. Spend time with God in his word and prayer and listening to him every day. Begin with those scriptures in this text, in this message. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. That's number two. Number three, what forms of expressing love and friendship intimacy have you found uncomfortable? Have you been able to find a way to comfortably express this kind of biblical love with others? It may not be a kiss, but can you give a hug? Can you do a little bit more to show you really mean something to me because I know you mean a lot to God? And then number four, what walls need to be broken down in your life to follow through on this command? What walls have already been broken down in order for you to be obedient in this? Begin to step out in faith and loving obedience and see what the Lord does. Not only in his church, but in your life and in your relationships. You see, a kiss on the cheek or forehead, a pure hug with a brother or sister in Christ, a firm heartfelt handshake, and other acts of loving kindness are all expressions of how we consider, care for, and love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's follow God's command in this one another as best we can and trust Him to get us there and allow Him to bring us together in loving unity for His kingdom and glory. Now those who listen daily or regularly know that tomorrow is Family Foundation Friday with David Walls from the Family Foundation. If it's your first time, join us again tomorrow to hear from David as to what is going on in our culture and in the policy and legislative world that so greatly impacts us and that we need to be sure that we're being salt and light and standing in God's truth to those who need to hear his truth and grace and love. As I said, join us and be sure to invite family, friends, loved ones, and enemies to join us as well so they can hear more from what David has to share and what's going on in our culture. Thanks again for joining us, and if you want to know more, check out our website, loveandlordship.com, loveandlordship.com, all spelled out and together. There's the icon of the book there in the middle of the homepage, and you can click on the Give tab if the Lord's leading you to do that. We greatly appreciate it. It's all tax deductible. It'll only take you a minute or so. You can give one time or ongoing, and again, I say this, I greatly appreciate it. And I've got to say this always, if it's not us, after you're giving to your church fellowship, and he's leading you, keep praying until he shows you where we'd like you to partner with those that are walking in kingdom ministry and then partner with them there. I promise you, if you follow through on that in obedience, you'll be blessed. You can do so through mail to us. You can, uh, you can uh, have it sent to Love and Lordship and make the checkout to Love and Lordship and send it to 324 Timothy Drive, 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. That's 40356. You can also do it mobily. You can do it cash.app forward slash dollar sign love and lordship. And that's love and lordship are all spelled out and together and both L's are capital. Cash.app forward slash dollar sign love and lordship all spelled out together. Both L's are capital. Thanks for those who have done that. Thanks for those who have reached out at loveandlordship and gmail.com to encourage us for questions and, and insights and engagement. We thank you for that. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks always for your prayers, just as we always thank the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for my good friend Bill Reeser and Encounter. And then at 1245, check out Greg Horn and Hope is Here. I'm Greg Williams and you're listening to The Authority of Love.